Oh my God, Tom, none of us expected this. I looked at Mike, who I'd worked side by side with for the past 10 years and tried to hold back the tears in my eyes. It doesn't change anything, I told him, trying to keep my voice steady. It doesn't change anything at all. Are you sure, Tom? He asked me. I'm sure, I confirmed, looking at the other side of the club we were both sitting in. I looked at Lindsay, my wife of nine years. I always considered myself very lucky to have married a beautiful girl like Lindsay, with her stunning, long blonde hair, slender body, and large, firm breasts. I fell head over heels in love with her within a week of meeting her, and six months later, we were married. Since then, I fell in love with her more and more, and I was sure she felt the same way about me. And she still does. At the very least, what I saw should have put that in doubt. And then Mike followed me, and I moved closer to where she was sitting on some guy's lap, laughing and giggling as he talked to her, wriggling her beautiful slender body as she let his hands roam free. Bastard bitch! I started to loom over them, but Mike held me back warning me that I might want to think twice about that, as well as the seven big thugs who sat at their table. He was right, of course. The seven men in question were the Bray Twins and their gang, the most terrifying and ruthless gang of criminals in South London. These were not guys anyone sane would want to mess with. Maybe you'd better not watch it, Mike advised me. I think it's just getting started. As soon as he said those words, three more pretty young women joined the group, and the bastard who'd been playing with my wife, Lindsay, slapped her ass savagely and handed her over to another thug. The three new girls were distributed among the remaining guys, and in a few moments, all four women were captured kissing and caressing the seven of them. An icy hand squeezed my heart as I watched one of them slip his hand inside Lindsay's top and begin to play with her breasts. Damn. I didn't know if I could take it much longer. She's supposed to be at her sister's tonight, I muttered to my buddy, still almost disbelieving what I was seeing. Of all the damn places we picked, it had to be this damn club. People at other tables began to look around as the two rude men began unbuttoning one of the girls' dresses, and by the time they had more or less freed her from it, a small crowd had gathered to watch the entertainment. It was only then that I recognized the woman standing there in bra and panties as Julie, my wife's sister. So this was what they had been doing twice a week for the last year or so. Ever since my sister's husband divorced her after catching her red-handed in bed with two other men, why didn't I suspect? Why hadn't I checked up on her? Why had I allowed her so much freedom? The next thing I saw was Lindsay being lifted up onto a table where she was loudly encouraged to dance while a man I recognized as Jimmy Bray got under her short skirt and stroked her bare thighs. And did she stop him? Damn it. Lindsay just continued her sensual dance, smiling at Jimmy and moving across the table toward him to encourage him to feel further. I was ready to throw up and fought the urge to spew out everything I had eaten that day. Mike grabbed my hand for support, realizing I was about to fall. You didn't know, Tom? He asked. Not in the slightest, I replied. A few onlookers tried to join in the fun, but they were shoved away and punched in the face. One of them, who was foolish enough to resist, was dragged behind his back, no doubt expecting a beating. By this time, Lindsay and another girl... A rather slender redhead who had been dragged to the table with her were doing a dirty dance, rubbing their breasts against each other, laughing and giggling at full force. Eventually, they unbuttoned each other's dresses and within moments were dancing topless, flaunting their bare breasts in front of the small crowd who cheered them on and on. Stop, Lindsay, I muttered to myself under my breath. For God's sake, stop what you're doing. Jimmy Bray took Lindsay by the leg and pulled her to him, reached under her dress, and meeting no resistance from my dear wife, slowly pulled down her panties. She only laughed out loud as she disentangled herself from them and tossed them off to the other end of the table. The redhead's dress soon slipped off her hips and fell to the floor. The hungry company hummed approvingly, but both girls only giggled. Without relenting, Lindsay pulled her dress down and found herself just as naked as her friend 
and they continued their performance naked except for the high stiletto shoes. God, it was horrible, and I fought the temptation to run away. Escape into oblivion. Anything would be better. Watching any woman go through such humiliation would be bad enough, but to find out it was your wife, it was simply indescribable. Look, Tom, my buddy whispered to me, discreetly pointing to the other end of the table. They're feeding the chestnut girl some drugs. Following his direction, I watched the disgusting sight of a half-naked young teenage beauty being literally spoon-fed some disgusting illegal substance, no doubt feeding her the habit this gang had set her up for. Worst of all was the realization that by then my wife may have fallen into addiction as well. Shit, what could I do? What did I want to do? What, what would any man do? A few camera flashes brought me back to reality and I realized with a heavy sigh that it was time to take action. I could no longer just stand by and watch this disgusting spectacle. Back me up, Mike, I said to my buddy. It's time to break up this party. We started making our way toward the exit. I'm a big enough guy and Mike is even bigger, so we didn't have much trouble pushing the other rubber enthusiasts out of the way. Eventually, we ended up next to a table within reach of the girls and the thugs. Keep your distance, asshole. One of the heavies growled at seeing the two of us so close. Look at whores all you want, but touch one of them and I'll personally break your fucking necks. I ignored him and called my wife by name. Lindsay, I called out. What the hell are you doing? Pretty original, huh? Or maybe just stupid. By then, she and at least one other girl were on their knees and not surprisingly, my comment was disregarded. So what did I do? At that moment, her bare ass turned to face me, and I took careful aim and gave her one incredibly hard slap right on her bare ass. She screamed. By God, she screamed, but not as loud as the poor guy. She turned around to cuss me out and got as far as saying, you stupid bastard, this, that you... I think that's when she realized who had slapped her, and the look on her face was priceless. Shock, embarrassment, embarrassment. Every conceivable emotion flashed across her face in those brief seconds. Then the pandemonium began. I warned you, asshole, yelled the guy in front of me, lunging, and his huge fist flew through the air towards me. It, it never made it to me. It never made it. I didn't bother to explain that it was probably about my buddy Mike. He stepped in and caught the guy off guard, deflecting his wild punch and dropping one of his own on the jerk. Half the crowd immediately decided, very sensibly, that they needed to be elsewhere. But the seven or eight remaining closed in around us. So, boss? The one sitting to my left addressed me. Let's get him. Jimmy and his brothers went into a frenzy, yelling at us and pushing the naked women away, rushing to confront us. I barely got my warrant out in time, but managed to say a few words. Jimmy Bray, I shouted to him. You're under arrest for prostitution, drug dealing, and... Before I could finish speaking, he lunged at me, but it didn't help him as the plainclothes policemen who were with us in the crowd soon held him back. By the time the uniformed cops showed up a minute later, the fight was almost over and they soon took out the others. Mike and I stood back, watching the mass of unhappy humanity in front of us. Detective Inspector, the uniformed sergeant addressed me. What do we do with the women? Take them all. I told him without hesitation. Register them all. For what? He inquired cautiously, vaguely realizing that one of them was my wife. Prostitution, lewd acts, anything you can think of. I growled at him. Throw the damn book at them. Mike and I sat and watched the pathetic column of handcuffed thugs being led away to the waiting police vans with the pathetic half-dressed women trailing behind. As my sister's wife walked past me, she spat at me. Luckily, the shot wasn't a good one, but we never liked each other. Tom, please, Tom! My wife begged me as I led the way behind her. Please don't let them take me away, darling. None of this is what it seemed. I looked at her and smiled. Somehow, she had been shoved back into an ill-fitting dress, and being a larger redhead, she had breasts, ass, and buttocks hanging out everywhere. She looked like a slut. 
which I now knew she was. What was that about tonight, honey? I snapped back. Your sister's potluck party? No, Tom, she sobbed pitifully, tears streaming down her chubby cheeks. Just make them let me go and I'll explain it all to you. Tell it to the judge, I replied to Lindsay. Then turned on my heel and taking Mike's hand, walked out of the club and back to my empty house. Another dirty night's work was done.